In the car as we drove back to his old house, he said, Mankind will someday realize that we are actually in contact with the dead and with the other world, whatever it is. Right now, we could predict, if we only exerted enough mental will, what is going to happen within the next hundred years and be able to take steps to avoid all kinds of catastrophes. When a man dies, he undergoes a mutation in his brain that we know nothing about now but which will be very clear someday if scientists get on the ball. The bastards right now are only interested in seeing if they can blow up the world. We told Joan about it. She snuffed. It sounds silly to me. She plied the broom around the kitchen and Bill went in the bathroom for his afternoon fix. Out on the road, Neil and Al Hinkle were playing basketball with Julie's ball and a bucket nailed to the lamppost. I joined in. And then we turned to feats of athletic prowess, and Neil completely amazed me. He had Al and I hold a bar of iron up to our waists, and just standing there, he popped right over it, holding his heels, and he said, go ahead, raise it. We kept raising it until it was chest high, and still he jumped over it with ease. Then he tried the running broad jump and did at least 20 feet. And then I raced him down the road. I can do the 100 in 10-3. He passed me like the wind. As we ran, I had a mad vision of Neil running through all of life just like that. His bony face out thrust to life, his arms pumping, his brow sweating, his legs twinkling like Groucho Marx yelling, yes, yes, man, you sure can go. But nobody could go as fast as him, and that's the truth. Then Bill came out with a couple of knives and started showing us how to disarm a would-be shiver in a dark alley. And I, for my part, showed him a very good trick, which is falling on the ground in front of your adversary and gripping him with your ankles, flipping him over on his hands, and grabbing his wrists in a full Nelson. He said it was pretty good. He demonstrated some jujitsu. Little Julie called her mother to the porch and said, look at those silly men. She was eight years old. She was such a cute, sassy little thing, and Neil couldn't take his eyes off her. Wow, wait till she grows up. Can you see her cutting down Canal Street with a hainty eye? <laughs> oh. He hissed through his teeth. We spent a mad day in downtown New Orleans walking around with the Hinkles, and Neil was out of his mind that day. <clears throat> when he saw the T and NO freight trains in the yard, he wanted to show me everything at once. You'll be a brake man before I'm through with you. He and I and Al Hinkle ran across the tracks and hopped a freight. Luann and Helen were waiting in the car. We, we rode the freight a half mile into the piers, waving at brakemen and firemen. And they showed me the proper way to jump off a moving box car, the back foot first to leave the other foot jumping off the ground when you hit. They showed me the refrigerator boxes, reefers, good for a ride on any winter night. Remember what I told you about New Mexico to LA, cried Neil. This was the way I hung on. We got back to the girls later, and of course they were mad. Al and Helen decided to get a room in New Orleans and stay there and work. And this was okay with Bill, who was getting sick and tired of the whole mob. The invitation originally was for me to come alone. In the front room where Neil and Luann slept, there was jam and coffee stains and empty Benny tubes all over the floor. And what's more, it was Bill's workroom, and he couldn't get on with his shelves. <laughs> Poor Joan was driven to distraction by the continual jumping and running around on the part of Neil, and we were waiting for my next GI check to come through. My mother was forwarding it. <clears throat> then we were off, the three of us, Neil, Luann, me. When the check came, I realized I, ha I hated to leave Bill's wonderful house so suddenly, but Neil was all energies and ready to go. In a sad red dusk, we were finally seated in the car. And Joan, Julie, Willie, Bill, Al, and Helen stood around in the high grass smiling. It was goodbye. At the last moment, Neil and Bill had a misunderstanding over money. Neil had wanted to borrow. Bill said it was out of the question. The feeling reached back to Texas days. Con man Neil was antagonizing people away from him by degrees. He giggled maniacally and didn't care. He rubbed his balls. He stuck his finger in Luann's dress, slurped up her knee, frothed at the mouth, and said, Darling, you know and I know that everything is straight between us at last beyond the furthest abstract definition in metaphysical terms or any terms you want to specify or sweetly impose or harken back and so on. And zoom went the car and we were off again to California.